Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Now before we go into today's broadcast, can we call for that daily bread? Are you ready? Join me right now and say, Father, I demand right now my daily bread. It's coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Believe and receive what is yours in Jesus' name. Praise God. Now then, I, I began to share with you yesterday, and I said we titled this, this message for this month, Tithes and Offerings. And I said we're going to be going into in-depth knowledge and study of God's mind and God's plan concerning this thing. So yesterday, we began to look at the book of Malachi. And I want to pick it up from there. I want to pick it up from verse... Let, let's start from verse 6 again. For I am the Lord, Malachi chapter 3 from verse 6, For I am the Lord, I change not, therefore you sons of Jacob are not consumed. And then verse 7 says, Even from the days of your fathers, you have gone away from my ordinances now that's something of notes god says you have gone away from my ordinances now what does he mean my ordinances now these are statutes these are laws and patterns that the lord have set now i want you to understand something with god the works were finished from the foundation of the world. Before Adam was created, God had finished his work. So when the Lord began to guide man, he began to guide man according to the patterns that he has set. These things have been written that no Jesus said we should pray, you know, in what we call the Lord's Prayer. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now I've told you this thing, I've told you this before that what Jesus actually said there was, Thy will be done on earth as it is written in heaven. Because in heaven, everything about the earth is written. So sometimes you read writings that talks about the heavenly tablets, the heavenly records. See that now? And, and sometimes you see visitations from angels, and they say, this is what has been written. Ah, there are books in heaven. Praise God. Oh yes, there are books in heaven. Now, so every instruction God gives is to guide man according to that which is written in heaven. God is not going to say anything outside what he has written in heaven. He would not. Because that would be warring against himself. Now here is the problem. After God shows up and began to guide man now remember men began to walk with god long before the law was introduced okay so when god was speaking here he says you have gone away from my ordinances remember the law that god gave was supposed to help man stay in those ordinances so the ordinances existed before the law. Men who walked with God, was, they were guided according to those ordinances. See? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let me read a few scriptures to us. David was speaking in Psalm 119. Psalm 119. From verse, let me start from verse 90, 90 and 91. Thy faithfulness is unto all generations. Take note of that. Thy faithfulness is unto all generations. Thou hast established the earth 
and it abided. Follow. God is faithful to all generations. He has what? Established the earth and it's abiding. The earth is still there. There has been no maintenance on the earth structure. You know what I mean? What is holding the earth in its place? Have you seen that God sent a message to any prophet to say, please tell my children the year 22, I'm going to do some maintenance on the earth. So if you feel any shaking, don't be afraid. It's a maintenance officer's working. See, the earth has been established since and it is there. He said, they continue this day according to thy ordinance. What is keeping the earth is the ordinance of God. Watch this. He said, they continue this day according to thy ordinance for all are thy servants. So the pattern by which the earth is in its place. The pattern by which the sun comes up and goes down right from when man was created. That's what he's known. The sun, sun goes up and then it comes down. You know what I'm talking about? The stars, everything in their place. The moon, there is no time we have seen the sun and the moon clashed. The sun is trying to come up. You look this way, you see the sun. You look this way, you see the moon. No, sir. What has kept them? The ordinance of God. Now, thank you, Lord Jesus. It says they continue this day by according to thy ordinance. Now, if you don't understand the way God operates, you would make this kind of errors. Now, let's, let's look at that Malachi, for example. Malachi chapter 3. When he says, return to me, verse 7. You know, he says, return to me and I'll return to you. He says, how do we return? Then he says, return in tithes and offerings. Now, notice that People have attacked Titan. And even pastors began to be shy of it. And, and some pastors uh, began to think that, oh, uh, maybe we should slow down on, on this Titan thing. And, uh, and, uh, but remember, why should we slow down on Titan? Say, hey, you know, uh, it's not like God requires you to pay tithe first. Okay, what about offerings? And instead of giving tithe, let's just be taking offering. But God said here, you have erred in tithes and in offerings. So if you're attacking tithe, why are you saying offering should remain? You know, sometimes we, we cause we, we take one, one side and just start running with it. If you say people should not tithe again, then people should not give offerings again. No, no, no. They gave offerings in the New Testament. Where did you see them take offerings in the New Testament? In your New Testament. Oh, Paul said when, when, when collection is being made, huh? what kind of offering do you think they were doing then? Who told you that that was not part of their tithe? How do you know? Did he say, only offerings. Oh, let every man give according to how he has made up his mind. It's, it's so amazing. It's so amazing that you use. Now, understand something. You know, the, it, it, it's so funny. Now, someone says, in the mouth of two or three witnesses, Jesus actually said that, and that's a principle of truth. In the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word is established, right? But then you find people they quote a writing of Paul in, in Ephesians and quote another writing of Paul in Galatians and quote another writing of Paul in Thessalonians and say, see, three witnesses. No, it's one. It's one witness. You know, this understanding of scriptures, you see, one person, Apostle Paul is one witness. 
he's just one witness. So whatever he, he writes from, from Romans up until Hebrews, some people are still saying maybe he didn't write the book of Hebrews. Okay, to Timothy, to Titus. Everything, everything he gives out is Apostle Paul's witness. So that is one witness. So you can't take three quotes from the same person and call it three witnesses. So this idea that people have that the scripture is the inspired word of God. Okay. So they now look at the scriptures. First Corinthians is different from Second Corinthians. So they look at it. First Corinthians was given by God. Second Corinthians was given by God. No, see, the writings were Paul's writings. Yes, Paul was filled with the Holy Ghost. So his writings can be called scriptures. The same way our writings today can be called scriptures. You see that? Now, the, 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 the error in the thinking of a lot of people is to think that the Bible as it is, is a closed book. And that's an error in itself. You know, say so anything that is not here. <laughs> it's, it, it's such amazing how we think sometimes and close our minds. Anything that is not here. You know, sometimes you just need to read some history just sharpen your history mentality and you will uh, you will appreciate truth better because now you begin to realize abraham never had a book like this but he walked perfectly with god david never never had a book like this he walked perfectly with god several of several people like that and and, and we come closer there are great um, apostles of faith that they didn't have the Bible. The Bible as we have it now, this, this edition that we have it, you know, um, most of it came out from the King James. Most of the several translations were translated from the King James Bible. And of course, that's because King James, as the name sounds, the King James was a man, was a king of England, king of the United Kingdom. It was a king who got some Bible scholars together and said, look, uh, let's put down these truths together. All these stories about God, the Bible, can we put it together? Now, there were Bibles that existed before the King James. Yes, they go study history. So they came down, they came together, and, and, and I, I bet you, I doubt the salvation of those theologians that put it together. I doubt if they knew Christ indeed. So they sat down and they debated and they decided, okay, let's, let's have this. Now, they didn't debate and remove some because they are wrong. Everything cannot be contained in one book. Just simple logic. So, praise God we have this. But I'm trying to tell you that before this came, there were people who were really working with God. So how did they work perfectly with God? Some of them we still refer to them because we've not even been able to measure up to the kind of works that they did. Go read history. So you now realize that it's not about having the book. It's about having the spirit of God in you and having a perfect walk with the Spirit of God. Now, the Spirit of God will never lead you into error. Take note of that. The Holy Spirit will never lead you into error. But then there are things we may call error that is not error. The reason we call them error is simply because in we don't have the perfect understanding of even this book. For example, just like we have always interpreted, Jesus said they shall take up serpents, and it means they will take up snakes. But that's not what Jesus meant. See, now, the understanding we had 
a serpent is snake. So lo, um, behold, I give you uh, authority to walk, to tread upon serpents and scorpions. You see, oh yeah, that's what he's talking about. But then you, you forget that language itself can affect things. I think I shared that with you uh, last week or thereabout. Language in itself can affect things. In the days of Jesus, they called men snakes. They called men serpents. They called men vipers. There's a reason they called men those things. You remember John when he was preaching and then he looked up and saw the Pharisees come to his baptism. And then he looked at them and said, you brood of vipers. That's like saying you brood of serpents who have warned you to flee from the rod to come. So why was John calling men serpents? Why was he calling them vipers? You see, now that was the language of the day. So such people who, who are undesirable, people who, uh, they, they do certain things to the truth. They are seen as, the, as those who twat the truth or twat the purpose of God. And go read what John said concerning them. Now these were Pharisees, custodians of the law. Custodians of the law. Think about it. They are the people who read the law in the synagogue. They are the people who teach the law in the synagogue. They are the people who judge matters of the law. You know, when, when people go astray, the Jewish people now, when they go astray, they sit in council and they judge their matters. Now, they are trusted to be judges, but John called them brood of snakes. So that was the language then. So when Jesus said they shall take up serpents, in their day, they understood what Jesus was referring to. But because we were not there to understand their mode of speaking then, you see, now we come today, we don't realize that Jesus wasn't talking about picking up physical snakes. So someone that is exercising his faith, I, I, want to, I want my faith to get to that point where I will pick up a snake and nothing will happen to me. Now, he said it's cheeky, it. You begin to compare yourself with Moses. After all, God told Moses, drop your rod, he dropped it. He began serpent, he became a snake. He said, pick it up by the thing. He picked it. Now, your mind, because there's snake involved, there's serpent involved, your mind begins to go in that direction. But ask yourself a simple question of everything the Holy Spirit will be doing in your life is to be carrying snake from the ground. That is a big deal. You know, Jesus could have simply said, you will challenge lion and you will not be afraid. You will stop an elephant. You understand what I'm saying? Now, that would have been a big deal. But he used the word serpent. Because in their day, it was a normal language. When you say, stop the serpent. Somebody's not looking at the ground and looking for a snake to kill. He knows that somebody has infiltrated the camp and is trying to lure us away from the truth. And those were the people they referred to as serpents. You see that now? And that's English. That's, that's language, excuse me. So if we don't understand these things and then begin to put it in line with the ordinances of God, see, we're going to be making big mistakes. We're going to be making blunders in our interpretation of scriptures. So let's go deep into the spirit of God and not stop at reading the testimony of one man. See, all the, all, all the teachings about giving in your New Testament, as you refer to it, is based on what Apostle Paul taught. And that's just one witness. Everything he taught, is, that's his witness. That's one man's witness. Guess what? The witness of God didn't stop with Apostle Paul. God, that's why I asked the question yesterday, when did the New Testament stop? We must go beyond just what Apostle Paul has said. And, and this, is, this is how you judge what is right from what is wrong in terms of um, understanding and teaching. First of all, 
Listen to what is being said, just like I'm talking to you now. Listen to what I'm saying. And number two, am I speaking by the Spirit of God? Jesus said, by their fruits, you will know them. That's what Jesus said, by, their fru by the fruit, fruit they produce. So that fruit itself is not talking about um, uh, money or he's talking about character. By, by the character of the person talking, you can begin to tell that, okay, does this person leave what he's preaching? See? So I see that his life is producing the fruit of that message. Then he might be a witness. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes, he might be a witness. So you pay attention to what the person is saying. And two, you trust the Holy Spirit in you to confirm what the person is saying or to tell you that person is not speaking by me. If you don't have the Holy Spirit in you for this confirmation, then you don't even qualify to judge. You are just being tossed to and fro. You are not qualified. My time is up. Praise God. You know, the Spirit of God will help us this week. Praise God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Your name is great. Your power extends to all the earths. And Jesus said, you will guide us into all truths. This is exactly what we desire of you, Lord. Bring us forth to the place of your truth. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Like, share, and subscribe.